Right, from Middlesbrough, South Bank, you have been chosen to play the part in the Sears film of the notorious Lee Duffy. Um, how did that come about, Paul? Because it's quite ironic and spooky, if you like, that you are you are actually a South Bank lad. So take me back. When did you get that call? It was just before Christmas, a couple of weeks before Christmas, and uh, I got a phone call of uh, Stephen. Uh, Steve Riff. Steve Riff. And uh, he says, Oh, is it Paul Venice? I says, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, What's happening? Who's this? And he went, Look, we're doing a documentary. Long story short, we'd like to play Lee Duffy. And I just started laughing. I went, Yeah, right, no. And I remember just putting the phone down, you know, like, thinking there was a wind up and that. And then the message me, so then I rang him back and I said, Look, are you being serious? And he was like, Yeah, definitely. One million percent, look. We'll come down and you know, yeah, after Christmas and that, have a meet up and that. And I was like, He said, Would you be interested? And I said, Yeah, of course, yeah. Well, I, I did say to him, like, I can't act, do you know what I mean? He went, nah, don't worry about that. Mm. So, yeah. yeah. Right. Um, the film's obviously about the Sayers family. Um, quite extremely well known for certain, you know, being ex-villains, if you, if you like. But uh, what do you know much about them? Well, no, I first heard of the Sayers when, obviously, with all the stories of Lee that he used to hear growing up and that, and I used to know Lee was, was friends with him. You know, and uh, the more you delved into the stories with Lee, the more they come in, the more you found out about the say. So, yeah, well, when we grow up, you know, listening to the stories with Lee and being obsessed the way I was with Lee, you become more aware of what the say is way, you know, so. Mm. Yeah, was, you actually yeah. met him when you were a kid, didn't you? Yeah, I did, yeah. Well, I don't, I don't remember it because I was, I was tiny, you know, I was only, I was only little. But uh, obviously with my mum being close with him, well, not close, close with his sister, but my mum knew him, knew him. They were, I was in a pram and they had a, like an aeroplane coat on. Like flying the, jackets. Yeah, the flying jackets with the big white collars. I had one of them on and he, obviously he liked, he liked the jackets and he'd come over and he was flinging us about and said, oh, he's going to be the next Lee Duffy. And I remember my mum telling me, saying, no, he's not. He's definitely mm. not. And obviously worried, you know. But, uh, yeah. But you grew up in, in the South Bank Estate and you still live there today, so... Yeah, yeah. So you you must have heard some unbelievable stories that are now embedded in Teesside folklore oh, yeah. forever. Yeah, <clears throat> I mean the man was a living legend. You know the stories that you've heard about him. You know I grew up listening to, mm. and I kind the kind of molded my character because when I the more stories I heard about Lee, the more I thought when I'm at that age, that's what I want to be. That's what I want to be like. You yeah. Know. For I mean I know people are aware now and I think well Paul Venice is going to play play Lee Duffy, but can you tell me a little bit about your password because. Obviously, people watching this won't realise when you say, well, I want to be the next Lee Duffy. It's fair to say, Paul, that you had a bit of a shady past yourself growing yeah, up. And yeah, what, did, yeah. what was that like? Well, uh, you know, as, as a young guy, <coughs> you know, I was picked on as well. I was bullied on. I was I was picked on. I was overweight. I had two different coloured eyes. And, you know, um, well, I was ginger. But as I got older, 14, 15, 16 year old, I started to realise, you know, what I was capable of. And listening to these stories about Lee and come more aware of what type of guy he was. You know, I thought, it molded my character into thinking, you know what, I'm going to be like this man. You know, and it, it got to the point where I was 15, 16 year old, <laughs> walking to the, to a different school, walking to schools, walking to places, walking into a group of lads, asking them who the, who the hardest man was, who the hardest lad was, you know, and wanting to have it out straight away there and then. You know, and I made a, diff a, a name for myself, I made my own reputation, you know. And uh, it kind of got the better of me, this reputation, because... You start, you start to think that you're untouchable and this, that, the other, you know, you you, do, you start doing a bit of tax and you're looking at the drug dealers doing all that stuff, you know, before, you know, I, de I developed an addiction to drugs, you know, an obsession to change the way I felt, you know, and it was all like living up to this reputation, having the fear and, 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 and the hype and the pressure, all this stuff, and you just sometimes, you try to look for a way out, mm. out, out, out to suppress all this pressure, and I found it with drugs and stuff. Mm. You know, and uh, it, did, it led you to go to prison, didn't it? Yeah, it did. Yeah, it led, it led <coughs> you to get involved with some bad people and doing bad stuff to bad people. But my dog got long story short, I ended up in some gun crime. My dog got shot off and my windows and stuff. And then before you know, I armed myself and uh, I ended up getting caught with this gun and went to prison. Yeah, and got, a, got a decent prison sentence, right? So, but I know that the directors. Gary Fraser and um, Steve Rafe and Stephen Sears said that we wouldn't pick an actor to play a fighter, so that's why they picked you. So a lot yeah. of people probably won't realise, but you were actually a boxer, a kickboxer, of like a huge... Yeah, well, 
before I went to prison, I was, <laughs> when I was in that lifestyle, I was dabbling in uh, in unlicensed boxing, but bare knuckle and stuff, you know. And I was pretty good at it. And uh, but when I went to prison, it cut that that career short, that the boxing career short. But when I got out, I was totally reformed. I was a different man. I just thought. I don't did know you find God in prison? I did, yeah. I, I well, I become open minded by by it, you know, and uh, by a good friend, you know, who, who led me like become open minded. He come to visit me. You know, it never preached, but told us about there's a way out. And uh, <coughs> when I got out, I had a totally different mindset, totally different way of living. You know, my heart had changed. It was softer. It was humbler. You know, and I, I ended up getting into uh, to mixed martial arts, K1 kickboxing. You know, and uh, I was I was good, and I uh, I ended up winning all the British titles, Northern Area titles, European title, and a world title. You know, made made a decent living from good sponsors, made a decent living, and. No good life, made a decent life for myself, you know. Mm. Um, and with this acting, I mean, we've we spoke earlier. We first had the time, you know, yeah. they, were, they were from a distance. <laughs> right. But, uh, yeah, I mean, once I get started, once I, once I get gone, it, it's hard to shut me up. You know? mm. but, <laughs> have, they, uh, have they told you anything about what you're going to be doing in the film or? Mm, not really, no. I mean, all I know is <laughs> that I'm going to be playing the Duffer in a film, you know, which, which I, I couldn't be more more happy with you know I'm mm. the moment with, with it. I know I know the, the the screen um scene of the Macy's incident in Newcastle where Lee goes into Newcastle and knocks all Viv's dorm out and says yeah. tell them the Duffers in town. Yeah. That's gonna be be uh, done, I think, um, yeah. from a good authority. But um the says are very close to Lee and you know there's I mean, have you spoke to anyone who kind of picking up the little mannerisms he did, you know, like he he'd sit with his legs crossed, he wouldn't interrupt anyone, he'd quite quite softly spoken, believe it or not, he wouldn't swear much, he'd drink out half pint glasses and lots of little mannerisms. Well, not really, no, I mean, don't get me wrong, I, I think I knew enough about him to know how he was and what type of person he was and the, the character he was, but the little things like that, Jamie, I still need to learn, I still need to bring mm. on board, you know. I mean, I'm looking at his photos and I'm, watching, I'm reading his books and... You know, and it's the fascinating, you know, to know to to delve in a little bit more of what it was like instead of this big hard man who was just fearless, and you know, and a, and a pure fighter. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, listen, you know, it's I get tr trolled. Um, it's the nature of the of the game. It's if you put yourself in a public spot like you're there to be mm. shot down. Yeah. A lot of the times, it's from fake profiles. Freddie Flintstone. I forgot how many times I was there. Uh, Fighting with that guy before I actually knew him, okay. Brian Cockrell. He's never, he never even the seven Facebook accounts on Brian. He's never actually been on Facebook till about five months ago. So there's always mm. that kind of element which is in. Are you ready for that? Are you gonna? Yeah, I mean, look, it's not the first time I've been in the public eye. Not not at this magnitude, but I have been, you know. And I and I've had a few negative comments shot my way, you know. But you know, you got to roll with the punches. And at the end of the day, you're a professional actor. That's it. You're, go you're going to become a professional actor and, yeah. you know, I think this is fate. I think it was written in the stars. I know I spoke to a couple of other people and they were like, you know, absolute first... Ch I, I mean, I said to the Gary Fraser, the director, you could have travelled the length of Britain and never found anyone yeah. with, like... It's, it's, it's just, you know, that, I've heard Lee's voice on tape and listen to you, was like Stephen Sears said, it's just like listen to Lee. Yeah. But it's a South Bank accent. He was, Lee was very kind of Middlesbrough, like proper a borough accent. Um, but... He will be remembered regardless whether people like that or not. And it's very sad that in, in death he achieved a lifetime of immor immortality. He'd have only been 54 now, which is not even old. Yeah. Um, you know, and... But, you know, you, you must have grown up with hearing stories of this... It's almost like the Abominable Snowman, isn't it? Like the, the Loch Ness Monster, leader yeah. for South Bank. Yeah. He, yeah. he was that name from that town. The yeah. pride of South Bank, if you like, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, guaranteed. You know... Uh, the more and more you hear the stories and the more the, the bigger they grew in your head and in your heart and, and now to have this phone call it's surreal for myself you know to, to have this opportunity present itself you know it's because it's like it's weird because i've listened i've grew up listening to stories new, like all my life every year even different story different story different story and then i'm pitching in your head how he was who he was and you know what type of guy he was what would he be like if he was still alive you know and we we, we get to relive that and we get to keep this legend alive. You know, by How was your family when you told them? Yeah, they were, they were happy. I mean, look, my mum and dad had had in, new, countless interactions with the guy, do you know what I mean? And they never, never had a bad way to say about him, I think. Can you tell us any? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there was one time, my dad said he'd, uh, 
the amount of times he'd seen Lee put his arm around people and mm. sort of go whoosh you know, mm. and just sleep them mm. he said one time he'd come up and put his arm around and my dad had said do you mind if I dance with your wife <laughs> he does said, yeah, of course, you take it home if you want. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what he said. I don't think he, I don't think he said it, but he, he yeah. was probably thinking that, you know, he's not going to say, no, you can't. Keep your hands off of your own. But yeah. I think him and my mum had a good relationship, a respectful relationship, because my mum was a good lass, you know, one well moment, that's all. Was she a proper South Bank lass? Like? My mum was a proper South Bank lass. So yeah. she, right, so she grew up really... Yeah, she she was a proper South Bank lass. She, <clears> she grew up, she could handle herself, and, you know, she was well known in that, you know. She's she's a Christian lass, she's a good lass, she's, She's a really good woman. Was there any part of this that you thought, hang on a minute, I can't, or was it just an instant yes? Mm, it, it was instant yes, but the, mo- the moment the phone call had ended, I thought, whoa, whoa. I mean, I wanted to speak to a few people, I wanted to make sure, you know, because I was good friends with Laurie and I was, you know, and, and, and Michael and a few of the lads who, who, who were related to him and stuff, you know, so what I wanted to do was just speak to these and get the, I would much rather have had the blessings but in my head, I always knew if it's not me, it's going to be someone else. Mm-hmm. So regardless, I would have definitely done it one hundred percent. Right. Sure, you can't, you can't, you can't let go. You know. Yeah. So now, basically, for the rest of the year, I mean, I know the trailer's going to be made in March. Steve Rave tells me. Mm. Acting the set's going to start. I think possibly January next year. Yeah. So now it's all about what you're going to do a bit of training. You're going to do kind of research and. I, you know, I'm doing more research now. I mean, I'm halfway there to a degree on Lee Duffy at the moment now with all the stories that I know. But, mm. you know, I think it's it's like you said, Jamie, he's learning his, his mannerism, his personality, what he was truly, truly like, how we, how we was speak, how we was spoken. You know, I, I am back in training now. I've been back in training for a couple of weeks now. So, you know, I'm just, just doing my best and, and trying to do the family proud and Lee's, Lee's name proud, you know. Yeah, you need to get a pair of red feeler boots. Red feeler boots. <laughs> That's what he always proper, ordered, proper isn't he? dancers. Yeah, um... Plenty of shorts and all that, but the the the, the um the film people will always uh, you'll uh, you'll have a dress code I imagine yeah. from, from the, the directors Paul. But uh, was there anything that you wanted? Yeah, absolutely clean shaved. You never yeah. see a picture of Lee. To be honest, I don't think you could quite even grow a beard. You know, There's one picture where he's got the the, the, the father's tash. Yeah, he's yeah. doing his best to grow a tash. You can do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Right. Yeah. Um. So. I mean, what's your plans on? Are you going to get bigger or for the role? Or I don't know. The, the way I train and lift is, I'm, I'm a big set lad anyway, so what I need, all I need to do is just gain muscle. Mm. And I kind of, if I get my diet right, gain muscle, I'm always going to look well anyway. You're know? six foot anyway, aren't you? Yeah, six foot. Let me get a bit taller. I'll right, push six foot too. Right, right. Um, Right, anything that you wanted to tell us, Paul, regarding just that you're really excited about this role and all that? And... Oh, ecstatic, ecstatic, you know, really excited, it's an opportunity of a lifetime. And, you know, all that, the reason for this role, it, in my head, is, you know, just keeping this living legend alive, you know, it's South Bank legend, man, you know, mm. where I'm born. What's South, what's South Bank like today? There's not much there, is there? One side's been knocked down, it's still there, you know, it's still, it's, you know, I'm, I'm South Bank born and bred, you know what I mean, through and through. It's, it, South Bank will always be in my heart, you know, and it, if anyone's got a bad bad thing to say about it, you know, they need to look, look elsewhere. Yeah, everyone, everywhere's got a South Bank, you know what I mean? But it's it's in my heart and it always will be, you know what I mean? Do you think you'll always live there? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I mean, no rush to leave. Mm. I love it. I love the place. But m- many years ago, people say before Asda, there was a football ground there, there was like nightclubs, there was it's theatres. It's my back garden, like the football, the, the fo- where the old football club is called the Wolf Manion. It's a, it's like a, it's like a community centre now. Wilf, Wilf, Wilf Manion Middlesbrough's greatest ever footballer, yeah, from yeah. South Bank. Paul Daniels is from South Bank, the magician, wasn't he? Yeah, there was rumours that I was going to be the next Wolf Manion. You know, <laughs> <probably not. laughs> yeah, I've heard. But um, yeah, so re- regarding that, mate, it's about building your profile up and what. To be honest, what an opportunity it is yeah. for you. Huge. You couldn't, have, you couldn't have made it up. And uh, I totally get why you thought it was a joke. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So. Yeah. yeah. No, so um. Yeah, well, thanks. So, and uh, before we go, Paul, give us the catchphrase. Oi, oi, now then, now then. Perfect. <laughs> well done, son. Well done. Right, keep right. <clears throat> he used to walk, still, even the street, did he walk? Like, he was springing. Mm. Like a spring in his walk. You know, some people bounce. And yeah. Like, 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 walk. Never seen him walk heavy. He was always, you know, the bodybuilders walk heavy, so big and tough. Spring. No, 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 no. It's like, no, like that. Yeah, right, yeah. Like that, and I was, that was his favourite thing. I was sat last night because my mum yeah. grew up with me as a kid and all that. Yeah. And my dad obviously always like, have a, 
like a lead to the side, but it was a mouthful yeah, all yeah, the time. Always, always and he said, what would make you go? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Drag you down with this. Yeah, so he yeah. said he was good. He, he, said he, he, wasn't, he was a clever man because the way he would do it, he would come up with you and he would sort of like lean in and like come up. So you would, you would know he was going to be all right with you, but you'd still have that fear yeah, in case he wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? And that would just be his order. And then when I got friends with him, I was like, keep your mind.